I want to bring you back about eight years ago. I, uh, I had the perfect life. I mean, a beautiful wife, a beautiful daughter, great family, supportive friends. I had a great job working for a company that uh, treated me well, paid me well, uh, gave me the flexibility to live the life that I, that I loved so much. I had a home in Canada, I had a home in Mexico. I mean, really the perfect life. And yet, something was missing inside me, a, a feeling I, I would describe as wanting to be more purposeful, wanting to be more meaningful, and, and to do something in the world that created a legacy or, or taught my, my daughter uh, something important about herself, about myself. Something was missing. And so I find myself at a retreat. This is an annual retreat that the company I work for held every year to bring people together, to inspire them, to teach them about what's new in the business, what's new in the industry, uh, and to refresh folks. And, and we're doing a team building event. And the team build, building event starts like this. So we're in Las Vegas, you know, the land of consumption. And there's a gentleman on stage and, he, and we're all seated. You know, the whole team is seated. Uh, there must have been hundreds of people there. Uh, we're all in our chairs and, and the man gets up on stage and he says, I want everybody to reach under your chair. So we all go and we reach under our chair. He says, you found a bag and we find a bag. There's a Ziploc bag with a number on it and a tool inside. And he says, okay, now I want everyone to group together. All the number ones, all the number twos, the threes, the fours, and so on. And then another curtain opens up and there's a whole bunch of boxes. And in those boxes are brand new bikes that have yet to be built. So we built these bikes and at the end of it, the clock goes and the, and the fellow on the stage brings everybody back together and he says, okay, I want to share with you a, a, a message that it's important every day that you go out and do the best work you can do because there's someone on the other end of that work and that someone expects that you've done the best you can. And I'd like to introduce you now to the folks on the other end of your work today and he opens a curtain and there's all these inner city kid standing there and I, I don't know what to tell you I just I was shocked um, you knew that these were these were inner city kids that these were poor kids he went on to describe how they'd never owned a bike before they'd never even ridden a bike before and this was their first experience their first time getting a new bike and riding a bike and I would describe the experience as emotional. I immediately missed my daughter, I missed my family. I felt guilty uh, that I didn't do a very good job and even a little concerned that the bike maybe wasn't even safe. Um, and I felt kind of bad about myself. I was, I was in shock, I, I couldn't believe it. There were these kids standing there and they had these huge smiles on their face. And there was me with all the time in the world and I, I didn't, I didn't give it my best and, and something changed inside of me. I felt hot, I felt uh, sad, I felt confused and a little excited too. The man went on to explain that it's okay, behind door number three we have some bike mechanics who are going to fix these bikes and make sure they're safe and, and these bike mechanics went out into the crowd and they did some quick work on the bikes and deemed them safe and then the kids came out and when those kids saw those bikes the look on their faces was incredible. I mean, they lit up and you could feel the energy. It lit up the room. It didn't matter that they were inner city kids from Vegas. It didn't matter. What mattered was the act of, of helping them and the receiving of that, of that giving. It was just inspiring. I mean, I can't even describe in words the feeling that I had seeing the looks on those kids' faces. It was life-changing. Now I want to bring you back further a year where I was on a vacation with my family in Mexico. We had just purchased a vacation home. We're going there to check things out, get a little bit of work done and have a little bit of a, of a break. So my daughter and I went down to the beach and a man pulls up in a little VW microbus and he approaches us and he asks for money. He's got some kids with him. And he's speaking Spanish. I didn't really speak Spanish at that time. Didn't really understand what he was saying, except I knew he had these kids, he wanted money. I tried to ask him what the money was for. He explained it was for the kids. I didn't give him any money. I'm not 
big on just handing out cash to people. Uh, I'm a little cynical, maybe a little skeptical by nature, and, and I didn't do it. But I did take his business card. It looked kind of handmade. Uh, I went back home later that day and I told my wife about the story and, and we talked about it and decided that we should go there. Let's check it out. We're in Mexico where we have a home in this country. Let's go on an adventure. So we looked up the address on Google Earth and we went there unannounced and we showed up. And when I got there, I realized that this is a real place. Uh, this is a real guy and, and there's a bunch of kids there, probably 20 or maybe 30 kids there. And I was kind of taken aback by the conditions that they were living in. I mean, it was clean, the kids were happy, but it was rough. You know, the sinks didn't have pipes, they just went into a bucket. Um, the roof uh, of, the, of the kitchen area was just a kind of dilapidated uh, palapa, so these are like palm reeds that are intertwined. This is a common roof in Mexico, but this one was, it needed some work. Uh, the dormitories uh, for the kids, there was two floors, boys on the top, girls on the bottom, they were lined with beds. It was, it was rough. Um, certainly nothing close to the standards that, that I live and my family lives and the people that I know and love live in. And I looked at my daughter, I looked at these kids and I, I felt something, some urge to help. But I didn't know what. I learned over the years that, that this is, in fact, an orphanage. This is a home for kids whose parents are in prison, or they're on the streets, or there's just terrible violence in the home. In some cases, there's parents with an illness and they can't care for the children. Um, you know, some of these are, are, are complicated situations, and this is a home for kids. It's not government run, so this man goes by, he gets by, paying the bills every day by, by approaching people like me at the bar on the beach and asking for money. I find myself back at this business event and we're building the bikes. And I suddenly felt, hey, here's something I could do. And I decided right there and then that I wanted to buy bikes for all those kids I'd met a year earlier at the orphanage. I thought, what a great opportunity. Now, I had some doubts. Maybe I should be doing something closer to home. Surely there's poor kids in my own community I could help. Um, homelessness, maybe there's some other causes in the world or at home that I should be doing something with. But I decided, no, I'm going to do this. And so when I got home from the, from the uh, business retreat, my wife and I talked about it. We started a fundraiser and we did it. We, we started talking to our friends and family. We, we built a Facebook site, we built a, Go, uh, a GoFundMe page, uh, we sent out some emails and we started collecting money and, and people donated and we raised enough money to buy a brand new bike for every kid at that orphanage. Uh, we had the bikes shipped uh, to, to uh, Mexico, someone had volunteered to store them in their garage. Um, and when we got to Mexico, we opened this guy's garage and we had a look inside and went, oh no, they're all in boxes. I remember building the bikes the first time and how, how complicated and how difficult it was. And I thought, oh man, I'm going to be a little overwhelmed here. And so we did another post and we asked people to help us build the bikes. And people came up to the house and they helped out. And some bike mechanics showed up and made sure they were safe. And some Mexican families heard about it and made tacos for everybody. We had this great experience and on Christmas day, we delivered 30 brand new bikes to some very poor kids at an orphanage in Mexico. And it was amazing. I mean, when you see the joy in a child's face, like that kind of a kid that's not going to get a brand new bike ever, and there it is on Christmas, unexpected, the look in their face, the, sh the surprise, the joy, the, the tears, it made me realizing that it made me realize that it wasn't about, you know, Mexico or Canada or this community or that community or I should do this here or that there. It's just giving is giving. Helping is helping. You have no way of knowing what the ripple effect is going to be. We're a global place, we live together, and it's important just to help out when you see an opportunity, and, and that's what I did, and it felt really good. I think it changed my life forever. Could that experience, that incredibly fulfilling and inspiring experience, led me 
on a path to want to do more. In 2014, Hurricane Odili hit. And if you're not familiar with that particular weather event, it was one of the worst hurricanes on record that hit the Baja Peninsula in Mexico. So it took a while to get through to people. Um, but finally I was able to get through to a Mexican friend and, and she took a drive and, and went to see what was going on at the orphanage. And, and she sent the pictures back and the pictures were devastating. I mean, windows were smashed, uh, the roof had leaked, beds were soaked, uh, the water system was destroyed so they couldn't get fresh water. Uh, the roof was ripped off. The little, little shop they had was completely destroyed. Uh, the bikes were destroyed, uh, they had a little chicken coop at the time, the chickens were killed, the garden was flooded, um, the place was destroyed. And they have no money, there's no source of income. Um, I didn't know what they were going to do, and, and I thought, someone should do something to help them. The government should do something, the community should help them. They need help. And then I decided, well, maybe I should. And so I did. I, again, my wife and I put together a GoFundMe page. We shared the pictures on Facebook. We, we, we pleaded with friends and families to pitch in. Every little bit would help. And we showed them the pictures. And, and we raised a significant amount of money, uh, enough to get things back on track there. Today, I oversee all operations there. I have found myself getting involved in other situations. I, I, I read a about the Syrian refugee crisis in the news. I traveled to Germany to deliver aid to refugees. I've been involved in sponsoring families uh, to come relocate in Canada. Uh, I'm working with the local Rotary Club to bring some, some really great high school kids from town to Canada for a once in a lifetime uh, experience. And I've even been approached to help build a new facility about 25 minutes north of our vacation home here, a new facility to help kids just like the kids at the orphanage that I've described. That's led me to need to create some structure and a retired attorney in town here approached me and said she would help do that. So we've established a new not-for-profit called Leaders to Give. I've been approached by so many people who have been inspired by the work I do. And, and they, the one common theme that they say to me is that they too want to step up and stand out. They too want to give back and do this type of work and, be this kind of leader. They're just not sure where to start. And so Leaders to Inspire was born. Leaders to Inspire is a, is a company that's going to offer to support and to teach and to guide people through this journey of being a great leader. We've got uh, retreats that we're going to be running. Retreats that will take place right here in beautiful Mexico that are going to teach leadership and provide an opportunity to do some hands-on work in a philanthropic setting work with the orphanage, building a new facility, this type of thing that can help you see the results of your actions firsthand. We're super excited about it. Leaders to Inspire is gonna to provide tons of content and actionable insights to help you on your journey to be a great leader and to fulfill your purpose of doing more in the world. I hope you'll join us.